the Miami Dolphins lost an embarrassing game in Week 2 against the Buffalo Bills. Sadly, the 35-0 scoreboard after the game wasn't even the most embarrassing aspect of the game. The most embarrassing aspect of the game was the fact Miami showed no heart or fight as they got beat up. They got punched in the mouth and just took it instead of fighting back. In the NFL, you can tell a lot about a football team by the way they react after getting punched in the mouth. They either swing back and fight, or they curl up and get their butts kicks. The Miami Dolphins got their butts kicked. To make matters worse, the Bills did not even play their best game of the season. Buffalo struggled offensively, and quarterback Josh Allen will have to be better. Luckily for the Bills, they were playing an inferior opponent. There was a lot of talk about the Dolphins possibly competing for the AFC East title, but that conversation should be thrown in the garbage right next to their Week 2 performance. That garbage Week 2 effort also led to starting quarterback Tua Tungavailoa getting hurt. That will be something to monitor all week. Miami went from having a lot of hype heading into this season to being exposed for having a bad offensive line. Their defense is as advertised, but they will not be able to win games against elite football teams on their own. There was a lot to unpack from the game, but here are my three major takeaways from Miami Week 2 loss against the Bills. 3. The offensive line stinks. Let's stop sugarcoating it. Let's stop making excuses. Let's stop acting like sometimes they are good, and sometimes they just make mistakes. Stop it. Do not let anyone lie to you any longer. This Miami Dolphins offensive line stinks. There is no excuse for two sacks on an opening drive. That is when things should run the smoothest for an offense, as the plays are scripted and have been repped all week. Instead, the Dolphins couldn't block anyone and got their quarterback hit. And they got their quarterbacks hit all game. I say quarterbacks because, as you all know, starting quarterback Tua Tungavailoa was injured while getting sacked on Sunday. Right tackle Jesse Davis, who I have said all offseason has no business protecting Tua Tungavailoa's blindside, whiffed on a block and got his quarterback hit. Starting left tackle Austin Jackson was just as bad on Sunday. The Jackson experiment may need to be ended sooner rather than later, as Jackson is progressing with time, he is regressing. It is hard to watch him try and block people because he just struggles so much trying to do it. I got a lot of heat for saying the offensive line was really bad and they were going to get Tungavailoa hurt, and I hate to say I told you so for something like this, but I told you so. This offensive line reeks of being the reason the Dolphins have a bad football season. 2. Xavier Howard has a chance to win Defensive Player of the Year. I won't be negative the whole time here which is surprising because how do you find anything positive from a 35-0 butt-kicking? But I refuse to allow Xavier Howard to have another year go by without getting the recognition he deserves because the rest of the team underperforms. If it weren't for Howard, Miami would be 0-2 right now. Luckily, the all-pro cornerback stripped the ball from Patriots running back Damian Harris and recovered it as well. The takeaway sealed the game for Miami and saved them from losing a game they should have easily won. Some people felt it wasn't sustainable for Howard to keep his 10 interception pace, and while they may be right, creating turnovers outside of just interceptions is huge too. But do not worry, Howard can still pick the ball off too. One of my three bold predictions was that Howard would pick off a Josh Allen pass, and Howard did just that. He slow played the route perfectly and then jumped in front of Stefan Diggs for the impressive interception. Howard is an elite defensive player in the NFL not just a cornerback, and after being a finalist for Defensive Player of the Year last season, Howard has a chance to win the award this year, too. 1. Tua Tungavailoa is injury-prone. I know some fans will come at me for this, but the facts are the facts. Just like admitting the offensive line stinks, it is time to admit Tua Tungavailoa is injury-prone. I mean, he has been injury-prone for a while now, but it is time to finally just accept he struggles to stay healthy. Last season, the thumb injury forced him to miss a game, and now it is an undisclosed rib injury. It forced him to practically miss the Bills game, so chalk it up as another missed game due to injury. It is a really unfortunate aspect of Tungavailoa's game, but it is what it is. Obviously, it is not his fault Davis got him sacked, but the sack was a clean hit, and Tungavailoa had to be carted off from it. It also isn't his fault he is injury-prone, again, it is unfortunate. 
injuries happen in the NFL, and it is part of the game. However, your best ability is your availability, and right now, Tunga Vailoa is showing he lacks in that category only 11 starts into his NFL career. Hopefully, Tunga Vailoa can somehow shake the injury bug to showcase his talent the rest of the season.